what I'm doing currently. I'm also on the yoga center Gurgaon uh, regularly, and I, I of course practice um, yoga, um, yoga extensively as well. Um, so this this whole project of mine came about about five years ago when my RO purifier conked off at home. And at that time, I started researching on the relevance of picking up another RO purifier. And I found that we didn't really need that, at least in areas where municipal water supply was being provided. Um, as I dug deeper into the subject, I figured out that um, RO is a brilliant technology, but absolutely not required for suburban areas, um, wherever any municipal water supply comes. Um, in fact, we're doing ourselves a massive disservice by drinking RO water, especially if you're um, if the water in your area has a TDS of about 500 or less, um, unless there are heavy metals in that water, that water is just good to drink. So I took a bold decision at that time, about five years ago. Uh, my wife was a bit apprehensive, but we decided to go ahead, junk our auto purifier, got a regular uh, UV UF filter, which was about half the cost. And it took us about 15 days for our stomachs to get used to that water. And since then, we haven't really checked whether we have any vitamin D deficiency or not. Yeah. So as you all know, vitamin D deficiency is a scourge of urban populations. The main reason for that is that your body is just not synthesizing enough vitamin D. We can't complain that there's not enough sunlight, especially in India, there's plenty of it. The problem is that we drink RO water. We don't have adequate calcium in our bodies. We've stopped taking ghee. So this combination of lack of calcium and lack of good fat in our body ensures that our body is not good enough to synthesize vitamin D from sunlight. See, vitamin D, basic biology, vitamins A, D, and K are fat-soluble vitamins. And vitamins B and C are water-soluble vitamins. So unless you have good fat in your body, the body just won't synthesize A, D, and K properly. So long, long story short, my journey started in this area. Uh, the next step was to chuck packet milk. I started sourcing milk from a farm. Uh, I live in Gurgaon, Haryana. Haryana is Haryana land of agriculture and cows and dairy. I mean, you'll be hard pressed to, not to find, um, you know, decent makhan and ghee and um, milk in, in, in this part of the country. And, you know, and then I started getting into a bit of product labeling work as part of my legal work is concerned. And I started questioning uh, things that we took for granted in our daily lives. You know, the soaps we use, the shampoos we use, the colognes, perfumes, deodorants, moisturizers, creams, um, the home cleaners that we use, I started thinking, why are we using stuff like Lysol, Domex, you know, Harpix of the world? We, you know, uh, we, we use Colin as a, you know, anybody thinks of a window cleaner or kitchen cleaner, they think, they think of Colin. So these, these things started hitting me uh, one after the other. Uh, whether you call it the regular practice of yoga or you call it uh, just getting these, you know, epiphanies, if you want to call them. And I started digging deeper into these products. And I found that I didn't have a freaking clue as to what these products contained. I mean, even if you are a chemist, you'd be hard pressed to figure out what every ingredient in these products was. I mean, probably a master's or a bachelor's in chemistry could figure out some stuff. But beyond that, there was a lot of coded products in these product descriptions or the ingredients of these products. If you did basic mathematics, you would find that none of these products added up to the quantity that the product claimed to advertise. So I started questioning the need to have these products in the house. And I will now share this presentation that I made. There are only 10 slides. I'll probably take about half a minute to run through each of them, about five to seven minutes, and we'll figure out. And I'm trying to set the tone for this um, talk. Just hold on a second. Can everyone see the presentation? Yeah, excellent. Just let me. Okay. So just a brief introduction to myself. As I said, I'm a lawyer. I'm also a teacher, 
uh, a yoga teacher. I practice a lot of Ayurveda as well. And I made it now my mission to re-imbibe and integrate the traditional notions that we've grown up with. I've started reflecting on and questioning health paradigms that we've taken for granted, especially in the last 30 years. I think a lot of it is misinformation and flawed statistical analysis, which drives a very unhealthy consumer mindset today. And ultimately, the idea is for all of us to regain control of our lives to the best extent possible. And I see no reason why we can't do that, even in this ultra modern instant gratification world that we live in. So I looked at three topics, um, you know, reducing, eliminating the domestic chemical footprint, promoting symbiotic and sustainable food sourcing and restoring the unity of mind, body, spirit, which is what all yoga teachers, including yoga love promotes. We, we try and bring ourselves back to our basic physiology, which is understanding the human being as a whole. But in this particular 45 minutes, we'll stick to reducing the domestic and chemical footprint. I'm sure all of you have used any, some or all of these products at some time of your lives or, and continue to use them. You know, they, there, are, there are popular toothpaste brands, soaps, moisturizers, deodorants, perfumes, shampoos, toilet cleaners, kitchen cleaners, floor cleaners, detergents, what have you. One of the reasons we all use these, and I try to find answers, is that they're very easy to access. You know, you could just go to any supermarket, you think of a floor cleaner, you'll find the brand that's advertised in a, in a, in a commercial that you watch regularly on television in the first style, in the first row in front of you. Uh, insofar as beauty products are concerned, there are titillating commercials with celebrity endorsers. There are very shrewd points of sale. And I'll explain this when we uh, finish the slideshow. All of these goods smell, they, they smell good and fresh. Uh, there are amazing statistics. I still don't know how these statistics are derived. They claim to kill 99.9% .9 germs. You could also say that, look, my parents used these, so I never gave a second thought to these while growing up. So I've just continued to you know, do what my parents did in our, in our house. Ultimately, the problem is that whenever we walk into a hospital, we associate a hospital with hygiene, cleanliness, and a sense of purity or a sense of safety. And we try and replicate the same smell at home. We use these strong disinfectants at home, and then you figure out that, oh, we think that we are safe. But that's not really the case. Typically, when I started applying my mind, I figured out that when we continuously inhale chemicals, industrial derivatives, artificial fragrances, acids, carcinogens, which are there in these products, this constant inhalation goes into our body and there is a deposition of toxins in various organs. The first place that these toxins hit is the throat. Right behind the throat, you have the thyroid, parathyroid and the thymus glands. You go down, you have the esophagus, the stomach, the entire digestive system. You have the organs complementing the digestive system. You have the pancreas, the liver, the spleen, the gallbladder. I, I'm, I'm sure many, every one of you knows someone who has diabetes or who has a fatty liver or who has who's had a gallbladder removed because there were stones in it. Um, you know, who's had uh, irritable bowel syndrome affecting the colon, the small intestine, you know, gas, acidity. And we... We put these, uh, we, we, we sort of attribute reasons for this to the stress of daily life and the kind of food and water that we eat. I'm not saying that's not the case, but I think a large amount of it has to do with constant daily inhalation, ingestion of toxins from chemicals that we use in our homes. Typically what happens is, um, and I'll explain this when we, when we talk face to face, but this buildup is what actually diminishes our immunity over a period of time and makes our immunity illiterate. That is incapable of resolving the difference between a naturally ingested product and an artificial product. Now, basically our body is a very primordial body um, and I will explain the fight or flight syndrome to you again when we end the PPT and how primordial our body actually is um, and how over years of disuse, uh, these chemicals have diminished our body's capacity to, to distinguish between what I call the good, bad and the ugly. And I'll also take in the COVID context and I'll try and explain how um, the fear adds on to this damage that's already been done. So basically what I've done is I have replaced um, food products at home. And I won't talk in grave detail about this right now. It's, it's a vast subject by itself. But 
I've replaced personal care and home care products as well in all these categories. I'll tell you the challenges, primary amongst them being convincing my wife and she is convinced now. And these are the brands that I've used. Um, you know, these brands represent products in the personal space and in the home space category. Please don't make any notes. We'll share this uh, presentation. You know, these are the brands that I've used. I've used one or more of the products in these brands and I found all of them to be fantastic. Um, they're typically available on Amazon or on their own websites or on other aggregators like Qtrove and Goli Soda. And I will explain the differences between fully chemical free products and products that may have one or more item, but are not really that dangerous. So we will just end this PPT so that we get back to the discussion. Just a second. Just a second. Let me just. Okay, wonderful. So I will share the, I will share the, the PPT later. I can share all the data on the WhatsApp groups as well. But so let me give you the background now. What happens is that our bodies are very primordial and uh, God or nature has blessed us with a sympathetic and a parasympathetic nervous system. It primarily comes from our hunter gatherer nature of our bodies. You know, we were all very primordial. We were all hunter gatherers by nature. And at that time, all we had to guard against was animals that could prey on us. So whenever, you know, we, we sense danger, either from a warring tribe or from, you know, the animal kingdom, our, our bodies had this ability to shut down the digestive system. The liver had stores of glycogen, sugar stored in the liver. The liver would release that into our bloodstream. Our heart rate would increase, more blood would pump in our body, our blood pressure would increase, and we would have the ability to fight off, take flight which basically means we had the ability to fight the danger or to run away from it. Now, that was in those days. In these days, there are no wild animals. There are no, I mean, we're not like living in a jungle scared of tigers and lions. And we don't have really any warring tribes. You know, there's a lot of politics going on in the world, but there's no really warring tribe who could just invade you overnight and, you know, uh, cause a lot of havoc and mayhem. But our, the tigers in our life today are our bosses, people around us, our spouses, um, you know, kids, <laughs> co-workers, and the end result is that we are constantly in fight or flight mode. What that does is it always keeps our sympathetic nervous system, which releases extra blood into the bloodstream when we need more energy, which increases our blood pressure to actually take flight, uh, pumps more blood into the bloodstream to give us more energy, shuts down our digestive systems to ensure that we can focus on running or fighting. It keeps the sympathetic nervous system on high alert. The counter to it, to this is the parasympathetic nervous system, which should allow us to relax. I mean, you've all heard the story of the tiger and the deer, right? When the tiger wants to eat food, it runs after the deer. There are only two consequences. Either the tiger succeeds or the deer runs away. In either way, if the tiger succeeds, all done. The tiger relaxes, it's eaten its meal. If the deer runs away and the tiger senses that the deer is too far to catch, then the tiger relaxes as well. It, it, it knows that there's no point running after the deer and no point wasting energy. Immediately, the parasympathetic system, nervous system of both the animals kick in and they completely relax. The extra sugar goes back into the liver, the heart rate relaxes, the blood pressure comes down. So unfortunately, that doesn't happen in daily life. We are constantly on high alert um, with the result that there is extra sugar in our bloodstream always. Our blood pressure is typically higher than normal. Now, we add chemicals to the whole mix, to our very agitated, stressed selves. What happens is the chemicals keep going in. You know, you get your disinfectants on the floor, you get the floor mopped, you ingest those toxins. You use colon, there is aerosol spray. You want to go out in the evening, you use deodorants and perfume, you ingest those aerosols and spray. You wash your body with water and you apply a chemicalized soap. It goes into the skin. There are pores. As absorbent as the skin is, it can absorb anything. It can absorb natural stuff, it can absorb unnatural stuff. So there's constant accumulation, little by little, every day of chemicals in our body. This is on the external side. Now on the internal side, we're partaking in unhealthy food. We take refined oils, um, you know, packaged milk, which has been homogenized and pasteurized. RO water, which has really no benefits at all, except if you're living in a brackish salt water area where it can actually help you. This whole combination is extremely unhealthy. And this constant inhalation of toxins from chemicals 
uh, from personal care products and home care products causes grave ill health to all of us suddenly one day you might find yourself losing weight or gaining weight you'll go to a doctor who will check your thyroid values and say aapka to thyroid bada hua hai you have elevated thyroid so what do you do you pop in a pill what happens when you pop in a pill see the human body is very adaptive you start popping in thyroid pills or take pills to reduce blood pressure or for example to you know regulate insulin in the body the body senses that this is already happening artificially right so the hypothalamus the pineal gland will stop in will stop instructing the thyroid gland to produce the thyroid hormone because you're getting an external source for it so you're getting you're eating lots of unhealthy food so the liver will stop producing the good cholesterol that the liver produces remember when it comes to cholesterol there are four words to, the more the merrier correct you haven't heard that from doctors unfortunately in the western world the statins or medicines that reduce cholesterol are so heavily promoted over the last 30 years primarily because pharmaceutical industries found it very convenient to push some medicine down people's throats that their overall cholesterol levels in the body reduced and they now become victim to the most horrendous mental disease in the world because the brain is cholesterol you don't have cholesterol in the brain your nerve endings are frayed you get parkinsons attention deficit disorders alzheimers you name it luckily in india we are still relatively unscathed in so far as the mental disease burden is concerned but not for long if we continue the way we are continuing so it's it's this brutal combination of all of these elements that penetrate our lives and make us slave to the grind so to speak so typically when covid happens now this is what i wanted to explain to everyone covid is i'm assuming it's not china's biological warfare right we'll assume it's a microbe that mutated from an animal it is part of the natural world our bodies ideally should be able to receive the covid virus shake hands with it perhaps fight a bit and then let go correct which is how antibodies develop unfortunately we've seen a lot of death all over the world now what happens typically is that with constant ingestion of chemicals the body's immunity which used to be very highly educated has now become illiterate it is not able to distinguish between a microbe or a pathogen which causes harm and one which doesn't typically pathogens that come into toxins or chemical products cause harm to you so the body is constantly fighting them so when a naturally occurring microbe enters covid the body thinks that too is worth kicking out of the body and therefore there is a severe immune reaction in some people in some people is not so severe so they are typically what you call the asymptomatic or the mildly symptomatic cases and then in some people unfortunately death happens because the body has created a what what the doctors call a cytokine storm there's a severe immune reaction to the entry of the covid microbe in the body now simple proof of this fact is that 70% of the indian population has the latent tb virus inside their bodies it doesn't mean 70% has tuberculosis which means that the tb virus is there in our body our body's immunity has shaken hands with it and has allowed it to peacefully coexist why does peaceful coexistence happen because it's very very simple we as part of the animal world and the humans we are ideal hosts for microbe the conditions in our body are ripe for life not for death the body is made for survival not for death not for medicine we all have the power to heal ourselves now how do we put this in context of the modern world that we live in well we all practice what our ancients have given us the gift of yoga but it's really not enough because we are not really living in a very natural environment anymore so we need to try and get back to the traditional notions that we've grown up with that we learned from our grandparents i'm sure all of us have talked to if we don't have a surviving grandparent or if we have surviving grandparents i don't think any of them used toothpaste when they were growing up i don't think they had the fancy soaps and shampoos that we have i don't think any of them ever used the kind of home cleaners and the kitchen cleaners and the detergents and the dishwashing uh powders and the liquids that we use today i was just talking to someone yesterday at the yoga center here and he was telling me he comes from the hills and he was saying you know they use firewood to cook food in the winters and the firewood becomes ash the same ash is used to wash utensils the next day in the morning it's as simple as that so at our home we replaced the typical chemical based liquid dishwashing detergents with ash 
rock as we call it in hindi urdu um i typically use patanjali's dishwash bar i may be using some brand name but i don't get paid by any of them just to make it very clear um we've replaced our detergents with a brand called the better home we tried and we liked it we've replaced our soaps and shampoos i can share with you it is the toughest toughest task me to convince my wife to give up her i mean the l'oreal world as i call it okay you know and and i'll tell you i mean i'm sure all of you not just as women but men have also faced it you walk into a salon to get your hair cut right so just when you're about to leave you know the person who cuts your hair will tell you you know i think you might need a hair spa you know your hair feels a bit dry do you want to try this product that's right on our shelves you know and and, and the shelves are so glitzy i mean you can't help it right it looks so glossy and beautiful right you pick up this argan oil and and these you know fancy oil and shampoo products and you think wow i mean this is going to be like supermodel stuff but the dreams come crashing down you get a hair spa done and i i i mean i'm i'm talking with such confidence because i've had a couple of colleagues who've been with me in in this in this trip so far and one of them um is is a is 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 a is, is a woman a very beautiful woman um who who i had the occasion of meeting in her office and um, you know i just casually said that you know what's wrong with your hair you know what's wrong with your face she said are you joking i i just got a hair spa done yesterday so i, I was like you know okay you know <laughs> sorry i didn't mean to you know <laughs> and then you know then i and and interestingly she said you know no you know what you've been gunning for me since day one i'm not doing your work on time so this is is this your revenge so we joked about it then lockdown happened she went back home her father coincidentally happens whose name also happens to be vishnu also happens to be an organic farmer and he made the same remark when she reached home and she was like you know what is wrong this all, all the vishnus of the world ganging up against me so what happened was so she, the father said well, what do you use she said oh i use forest essentials so the father said why don't you get the bottle so when she got the bottle she said turn it around and read the ingredients do you understand any of this she said no he said then just go throw it in the dustbin correct so you know there's another very popular brand called dove right Manif soap manufacturer correct the ad line tag line says one quarter moisturizing cream i couldn't find moisturizing cream on the in the list of ingredients so we as humans are extremely susceptible to the power of advertising it started in the 80s um i'm a child of the 70s i was born in the 70s and i've seen this whole change take place you know from doodwala to pack, packed milk from tooth powder to toothpaste um toothbrushes you know i don't think anyone's ever used toothbrushes in their life 50 60 years ago correct is my personal theory that toothbrushes are the single biggest reason for tooth problems because the force that you put with a toothbrush is quite unnatural the best force is your finger because the finger knows best you're touching the oral area properly so we've thrown out all the conventional toothpaste brands of our house we've gone back to the best 80s brand vico vajradanti i mean that's my personal choice i also use tooth powder in the night i don't use toothpaste twice a day and i use a combination of tooth powder with sesame oil in winter and coconut oil in summer just a couple of drops to make a paste and do a thorough gum and tooth massage i can assure you if you have oral problems try it within a week you'll see a shine in your tooth that you in your teeth that you've never seen before and i'm willing to lay a bet that in 6 months half of your gum problems will go away or earlier depending on how serious you how serious tooth problems you have you know people have you know i i know people who you know had the entire gamut of dental treatments done you know by the time they were like teenagers so uh that's a sad reflection of our society uh as my first yoga teacher told me have you ever seen any dogs brushing their teeth you know it's just a metaphor right Uh, it's five o'clock. So, the whole idea is that start looking at products for what they actually represent. The idea of this presentation is to make us all open our eyes and figure out that advertising and truth are two entirely different things. Point number one: there are lies, there are super lies, and then there are statistics. Okay, statistics are the worst form of lies that can penetrate our society today. You know. people who live in india happily believe what harvard university does it's got absolutely no truth or no relevance to what's happening here yeah harvard university studies may be applicable to harvard and surrounding areas of massachusetts but not here um it is unthinkable the kind of damage that these companies have done you see what happens is these companies may have you know gotten into the way of innovation in the 20s and 30s in america and the uk in the uk and europe 
with a very genuine desire to innovate and do good for society. But once you reach a certain scale, then the corporate profits and that kind of motive kicks in. And then you don't know what to do. You scale up to a level where you're looking to conserve costs, rapidly increase profits. You want to become the biggest. And unfortunately, society, gullible society becomes the victim because these are the things that you have no idea cause the kind of damage that they've caused to our society. And I mean, there are dentists in Gurgaon who have the courage to tell me that Vishnu, you know, toothpaste is not needed. You know, just a simple brush or a finger massage is enough. Actually, there are doctors who have the courage to tell you that you don't need to get annual checkups done. You just need to get a test done when a doctor recommends a test, not because you annually need to check what's your sodium or your potassium or your, I mean, they've got all the 20 elements of the periodic table, you know, in packages, in tests, correct? If you go, they'll say, well, you know, you wanted to get 10 more tests done because it's cheaper or there's a subsidy or something like that, right? Or there's a package deal on offer. Um, stop using, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you a very popular brand recently got into some kind of trouble. Um, a brand called Seba Med put out an advertisement that Lux was the same as Rin, right? They've got into controversy because of it. What they're saying is not, for, it's not, it's not, it's not false at all. Lux and Rin are the same. The only thing that Lux has an, Lux has an artificial fragrance and a more softer um, composition, whereas Rin is more coarse, abrasive, and it has a detergent like, or a smell that you now associate with detergents. Ultimately, both are the same. The company that said this, Seba Med, is going to be sued by Hindustan Lever. Because Hindustan Lever says that we never said it was different. <laughs> so, I mean, they're actually admitting to the fact that they never said that Lux and Rin were different. <laughs> Except, you know, we, we're so used to seeing, you know, uh, you know, celebrities endorsing the kind of uh, Lux and the Sun Silks. You know, you see that a drop of shampoo goes in your head and your, shampoo, your hair glows like golden glow or something like that. You see, you know, you see um, floor cleaners being used and that sparkle coming off the floor, 99.9% .9 germs go. You see utensils being wiped by popular uh, dishwashing detergents and you see the shine coming. You see companies putting out studies saying that, how are you using powder? Powder sticks to the utensils. But liquid doesn't. Liquid gets washed off, so it's safer. But all these are titillating, influential advertisements that may or may not have truth to it. Better to find out for yourself. It's very easy. See, in India, in, as in every country, there are authorities which allow products to come into the market, the regulatory authorities. I'm telling you this as a lawyer now. Now, these authorities aren't God. They don't have some God-given knowledge to tell you what is right and what is wrong. In general economic interest, they have to allow manufacturers to put products in the market that the manufacturers submit are safe. How do they do that? They provide studies. Who does the studies? The manufacturers do the studies. Who actually does the research? People paid by the manufacturers. And this is extremely rampant in the whole wide world. It's rampant in rich universities because they have the reputation. Harvard University doesn't make money out of the tuition fee that it charges or out of the merchandise that it sells in the Harvard co-op store. I mean, they sell a huge amount of merchandise. I bought that stuff myself, but it is the grants that they get from corporates. And this is the sad truth today. Some of these grants are used for wonderful work to pioneer technologies, to give us better services. But insofar as the product world is concerned, it is an extremely tough world. All the brands that I've shown you in the last slide, None of them have the money to advertise because I spoke to a few of the owners and I tried to figure out why weren't they on the first page. They said that we cannot get on the first page. We don't have that kind of a uh, financial backing to get ourselves on the front pages or on people's minds. So we, we're lucky now that the online world helps us. And um, uh, I can assure you, like, for example, if you use a brand like Better Home, if you use their dish, use their floor cleaner. You can actually take that water back and water your plants. I mean, there's nothing unnatural in that product. I do it myself at home. You can recycle washing machine water into plants if you actually have that bandwidth and the ability to do that. All of us who live in urban agglomerates have societies which, with you know, STPs or uh, sewage treatment plants below where we live. They are fully contaminated. The sooner we stop using these products, the STPs own cleaning process will improve. Now, imagine the STP is your body. You stop using these or reduce using these products, your body will bounce back in three to six months time. It'll start bouncing back because then it can control the amount of toxins that are there in it or fresh entry of toxins is reduced or stopped altogether. Then the body's ability to fight back starts. 
you will, as Ira would have told you, or many other teachers would here would have told you, that you will have a bit of cleansing. You know, when you start using natural products, your body will fight and eject those toxins that are there in the body. Some cleansing will happen. You'll feel a bit odd at times. You might have some hair loss. I'm all I'm speaking from experience, but within a few weeks, that will all settle down, and you'll see a different glow in your faces. Your energy levels will rise. Your pets will stop falling sick. You cannot believe the number of comments I've read on Amazon about natural products and how pets have their allergies reduced or ended altogether. Kids' allergies reduce. You will just see a level of energy that you've hitherto not seen before. So, on that note, I'd like to stop my monologue. Ira, do you want to pitch in? I see you're you're having your walk or something like that, correct? Yeah, I was inspired by you to come out and you know look at some plants and things. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I I mean while we're talking about these things. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's taken me a long time. The, 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 the toughest thing was to convince my wife, but she's convinced. And the best is my daughter now goes to supermarkets and tells people, "Oh, don't buy these toothpaste. They're all chemicals." You know, my dad will tell you what to buy. So I like look. You know, <laughs> let's go slow. You know, we don't want people coming after us with you know hammer and tongs. <laughs> but um, such is the case. Such is the life we lead today. Uh, feel free to ask questions, interact, talk now. I mean, this is enough of a monologue. I've been rattling on for about forty minutes now. So Vishnu, I just had one question uh, for you. Uh, so I'll just, you know, this is a very practical question. You know, so for example, recently I thought about buying a dishwasher, right? Because it gets, um, you know, hand washing dishes, a number of dishes. There's so much scope for error. Dishes get broken. Things are not cleaned properly. You know, um, some people in my family eat eggs. Um, some people don't. So just, you know, little things like that. So the smell may get transferred. So we decided let's think about buying a dishwasher. Right. Right. Now a dishwasher means switching over to detergents as well in the dishwasher. Correct. So just a question, like as we're trying to, all of us I think are trying to move to a slightly more automated world. You know, using kitchen, you know, using more gadgets to make life more efficient. Then how do we balance out, for example, using ash? Because the first thing I think to myself is going to clog the sink. You okay. know, and then then what's you know then it's going to lead to another problem of calling a plumber. So you know, like I sometimes like to use besan, but then when I use a besan powder um, or a scrub, which is made out of just besan and maybe some seeds, then it mm -hmm. will not you know it'll get stuck to the floor of the you know of the shower, and then that's another new sort of thing to right. to deal with. So how do you sort of balance out these things? You know, I mean, just just a question that I feel sometimes using natural products leads to a high degree of inconvenience. Okay, so the, the simple answer to that is no. The amount of chemicals that go down drains are causing far more damage than clogged plumbing. Ida, I have not seen a clogged drain in my house for the last two years. Um, to answer your specific question on dishwashers, we have a dishwasher at home. And that was the last thing we managed to make chemical free because a dishwasher, if anyone has dishwashers, has three components. There's a detergent, the basic cleaner, and then you have a salt and a something that brings sparkle in the in 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 the in shine in the you know utensil overall, and also helps clean the dishwasher by itself. Now, I have found substitutes for the salt and for the main detergent. The shiny thing is not something that's really necessary to use, and I think that. You should choose a dishwasher based on your life. I mean, my wife and I have a pretty tough life in terms of the, our schedule. So, we really realized the benefit of a dishwasher during lockdown. We were, you know, able to manage our schedules, our daughter's schooling at home, and our other interests comfortably without feeling the dire need of a maid at home. Um, but as as far as my knowledge of uh, ash goes, we use ash for certain dishes that don't do, don't go into the dishwasher and to do a pre-rinse sometimes when you have a very heavily clogged kadai, you know, when you cook typical Indian meals. Um, and we haven't found a single instance where you need to call the plumber for the drainage. Uh, people say the same thing about, you know, oil pulling and spitting oil into the sink. Um, that oil also clogs drainage, but I've really not found that to be the case ever till now. I've not had a problem of clogged drains at all. I actually think that uh, natural products, when they get into drains, and if you just need warm water, if you actually feel there's a bit of a problem, put some salt and some warm water and just generally wash it down. I've done that once or twice as a precautionary measure, not really as a 
uh, not really because there was a clog or a problem that I had. Um, I mean, just taking your argument to the next step, people ask me, you know, uh, we aren't able to get these products. Are they expensive? And the answer to both questions is, you know, they're not expensive and they are easily available now. Amazon stocks most of these products. They all have their own websites as well. They offer discounts if you actually go on their websites because Amazon is a business of scale. You might have to buy a lot of products to source it from a particular guy or a particular company. Um, typically one word of, I mean, sort of word of caution is something that you'll be doing even today. All of these brands, for example, if you choose a shampoo or a soap, you know, we'll have a soap for dry skin, soap for oily skin, soap for normal skin, multi-purpose soap. You need to try and see what suits you. Don't take every product for granted. Also, don't assume that every product is 100% chemical free. It's fine if your chavamprash has preservative. That's the nature of the product. It's the nature of the beast, so to speak. But otherwise, if everything else is natural, go for it. Um, there are toothpastes that vary in degree. There are toothpastes with 10 to 15 chemicals in them. There are toothpastes with four or five, and then there are only with preservatives, and there are those with none. So there are only natural products. You know, it's okay to use something which has a Less chemicals, if you're still used to that kind of a taste or a thing, you're still doing yourself a favor. And um, I would love to hear from all of you. I I really haven't heard the grain clock problem from anyone who I have, and I've done this at several friend circles now, this kind of lecture. Uh, but if you encounter something like this, it'll be good to try and figure out if we can solve the problem, if it's solvable. I Like I first said, it, it's a much smaller problem than having chemicals go into our sewage treatment plant below our homes and actually causing havoc to groundwater and soil, which is, I think, beyond hazard. I mean, you know, tomorrow, everything you eat is derived out of our earth. And if the earth is contaminated, then, you know, you're not starting off well. For that, Vishnu, I think there's a number of questions in the chat box. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. We have. Um, okay. Anchal's question is, have you tried making your own products? Anchal is very feasible. I haven't tried it, but my colleague, uh, she does, she makes her own soap and shampoo. If you have the time and the bandwidth, there are plenty of easy videos to learn from on YouTube. Uh, that's what she tells me. And you can easily source the raw material as well. Uh, any link to buy natural products on Amazon? Gitanjali, very simple question. Search for natural products. The good part about Amazon is every product has multiple pictures or images. And you can typically look at the image which has the ingredients and try and figure out whether the product is natural or not. Typically anything ending with sulfate, palmate, stearate, I avoid. Okay. Um, my personal recommendation, I use a lot of products of the brand called Wild Ideas, which is one of the brands that I've put up on the slide, the last slide. Why? Because I'll just give you a simple example. I spoke to the owner and I was amazed that he was able to manufacture a soap with just two ingredients. So every soap of his had saponified coconut oil, which is coconut oil converted to a soap form and one other essential oil. For example, if you bought vetiver, you had vetiver oil and coconut oil. If you bought turmeric soap, you had turmeric oil and coconut oil. If you bought patchouli, you had patchouli oil and coconut oil. I just found that so simple, hassle-free, absolutely no brain to be applied when buying the product. There are others that have a few more oils and a mixture of oils. You see, Manufacturers also in this space try out things, right? So they're trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. I recently picked up um, an oil. I have very dry skin. So I, I thought I'll use that oil. It worked. Uh, but my wife said it didn't work for her. So, you know, it, you have the same challenges that you have um, in the regular chemical space as well. And um, baby soap and shampoo. Um, I think Mama Earth is okay. I have a nine-year-old daughter. Um, the logic is that any soap that is natural and any shampoo that's natural can be used on anybody. Okay. So it is very, so you all have seen advertisements for soap saying not to be used under children or, you know, especially toothpaste saying that don't use it for children under six years old. The main reason for that is toothpaste contain fluoride, chemical toothpaste and fluoride, even if ingested in small amounts can kill, you know, or, or severe damage to children, but a naturally occurring product. And one other example was something that Ida gave in her class last Sunday, which is KP Nambudri's toothpaste. So, you know, you give a child that kind of a product, nothing will happen to the child. You know, my daughter uses Dabar Lal toothpaste. She likes that. She now used Viko Vajadanti as well, because I, I convinced her to try that and she liked it. Um, so, you know, if you like something fancy, go for Mama Earth. Um, we've used them earlier. 
Uh, my personal choice for my child is a brand called Mountain Herbs. Uh, the guy is an entrepreneur in Kerala and manufactures some mind-blowing shampoos and body washes. He does hand wash as well. Um, you know, you, so you could try Mountain Herbs. Um, you could try Wild Ideas. These are two brands that I really like and I use them a lot at home. Uh, there is another very good brand um, called Earth and Rhythm. Yeah, Earth and Rhythm manufacture these shampoo bars. I personally, my wife, both of us use shampoo bars. So there's no plastic, there's no liquid, there's no liquid in a bottle. So it comes in a paper wrap and you just throw the paper away, paper is recyclable. And the bar just melts away like regular soap does. Of course, it lasts longer because you don't wash your hair every day. Um, so, but the thing is, we need to know the natural better alternatives. Where do you get ash? Rita ji, uh, you can buy uh, Patanjali's dishwash bar. I use it at home. It is pure ash. Um, another very popular woman female product is gulab gel. I think a lot of women use gulab gel, right? So please, next time when you buy gulab gel, look at the label and figure out whether it's 100% gulab gel or not. If, if there are other things there like mineral oil and other things and other fragrances, don't buy them. You will often find in chemical products, ingredients like perfume, spelled P-A-R-F-U-M, like in French, parfum. You will have it spelt as fragrance and you'll have these weird codes like IC2135, IC6168. These are all patented chemical products whose core ingredients the manufacturers don't have to reveal to you because they are proprietary to their business. They've acquired an intellectual property right on it. So avoid those products. <laughs> you know, uh, you could also go for children. You could also go for, for a brand called Mom's Company. I personally know the owner because um, she, the daughter is my dad's, my daughter's classmate. Um, so they also make, um, so she's made it from a mom's perspective. She has two daughters of her own and it's pretty safe. They're based in Gurgaon, but they ship everywhere in India. But what I have suggested on the last slide is just the tip of the iceberg. There are many, many, many such wonderful local entrepreneurs making amazing products. So do your research. Don't worry about whether you have some chemical or one chemical in it. I mean, my number is there in the chat group. Put it up. I've acquired a lot of knowledge and ability to figure out how dangerous a particular product is. The good part about Indian product labeling law is you have to reveal the key or all the ingredients. The key ingredients are all the ingredients. You know, you're allowed to pollute people, but you have to be transparent about it, right? So the, the, the labeling law mandates that you reveal everything. So if you're uh, unsure as to what you're reading, do send me a pic, put it on the group for everyone's benefit. You know, there's absolutely no harm done there. And I'm happy to reply so long as people don't mind, um, you know, a bit of uh, this kind of information coming more in the group. Uh, it's for everyone's benefit. I can guarantee you that you start one or two. Oils are you know, mineral oils are pathetic. Yeah, yeah. just don't, don't go near. See, all of these are basically derivatives of petroleum derivatives. You know, the waste products that come as a result of the petroleum and the refining industry. So they actually derive products from that and they're selling it to people. I mean, another big problem, which I don't think people realize is soya bean oil. You know, the amount of effort it takes to mash that waste soya, which is actually cattle feed and produce an oil. Can you imagine people have managed to market and sell it to people for day-to-day -day consumption? I mean, we are in India. This is the home of mustard, sesame, groundnut and ghee. Everyone should be using a local oil. I mean, if you're from, if you're a Maharashtrian or someone in that part of the country, groundnut oil is your go-to oil. If you're in the South, coconut, sesame, if you're in the North, mustard, if you're in any part of the country, desi ghee. In my house, we use desi ghee to cook everything, read everything, except some specific Kashmiri dishes. My wife has Kashmiri origins, so she uses cold press mustard oil for that. I'm South Indian, so we tend to cook idli dosa and all that in sesame oil, which is actually the way it's supposed to be done. Let me assure you, sesame, mustard, ghee put together of all the omega, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever omegas you need ever in your life. You don't need anything else. You want to get vitamin D, have a spoon of ghee in the morning, have your milk or your coffee, go sit in the sun for some time. Done. I haven't checked my vitamin D levels in about half a decade now. I used to be very regularly checking my levels at that time. So, uh, have you all heard of Dr. B.M. Hegde? Yeah, B.M. Hegde is this brilliant 80-year-old allopathic cardiologist who's now become a complete Ayurveda convert. He doesn't have a YouTube channel of his own, but a lot of people put his lectures on YouTube. 
the same government our own government which promoted corona vaccines sanitizers chemicals masks has given him a padma vibhushan this year so bm hegde you should all watch his videos so as per him cholesterol the more the merrier uh, you know the more cholesterol you have the less your chances of getting cancer hmm. um, you know he's got very simple fundas in life he will tell you the truth he will tell you you know eat when you're hungry eat less than when you're full which is all of what all of us learn eat less generally i mean uh, ira will tell you in in yoga retreats uh, there's typically a two meal concept there's a meal at 10 and the meal at 6 nobody eats more than that nobody needs more than that um in a week of 7 days uh, you don't need 21 meals you could do with 14 you could you could do with 10 and you could be happy with 14 you know in yoga we say in hindi jo din mein teen bar khata hai jo din mein ek bar khata hai wo yogi hai jo din mein do bar khata hai wo bhogi hai aur jo din mein teen bar khata hai wo anyone rogi 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 let's get our fundamentals right in life let's eat less we don't need that much food let's try and adopt natural products in our lives it's okay if there's a preservative or one odd thing that gives you a little happiness little fragrance it's okay you know i mean if you like your perfumes if you like your hugo bosses and your chanel you know use them when you go out once in a while nothing will happen your body will tackle that adversity but don't torture your body every day that's the key and uh, you know uh, the idea is you should all have the foundation today to now actually um, explore this idea every time you buy some product why see in 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 vedanta philosophy we all learned that our consciousness is being covered up by layers or koshas or mistakes yeah there is pranamaya kosha anandamaya kosha manomaya kosha you know the, these koshas are all impressions that come into us from the world outside us yoga helps us penetrate these layers and go inwards and look at reality as it is in the modern context this is what it's meant to teach you when somebody gives you something don't believe it when somebody says harvard university says that uh, restaurant air conditioners are spreading covid virus don't believe it you know in my friend circle and i'll share this very frankly i have many friend circles i'm born and brought up in ncr i've lived all my life here i'm about 45 years old the most paranoid people in every friend circle are the ones who got covid yeah um the most confident people fearless people didn't get covid or perhaps they got it and they didn't even realize they had covid you know the body absorbed yeah. it naturally inside yeah and created a space for covid to cohabit with your body because your body is a wonderful host just like any animal body is so allow your body to become host rather than kick things out which will cause trouble and um i mean it's 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 such a telling thing today that that we over the last 40 years have allowed us to be subsumed by this consumerism and uh, like uh, rita said all kinds of cleaners in these supermarket aisles are frightening they are i mean you go to a supermarket aisle you'll go nuts you don't know what to pick up and then you remember the ad oh you remember hussein karanja wala advertising harpik oil remember akshay kumar talking about something else and you think wow i mean this is it i mean why would akshay kumar endorse something that is that bad the truth is that akshay kumar doesn't know better the con- the company is convinced him let's assume akshay kumar is genuine the company is convinced him look we've done these studies but these studies are all sponsored by us we want people to say that what we are doing is right <laughs> unfortunately it is not you know there's a world of a difference between organic and inorganic chemistry unfortunately the world of inorganic chemistry has overtaken us but i now see this desire in people to go back to these products in india i'm seeing so many people um you know now uh, becoming conscious uh, kritika has asked no gitanjali gitanjali is asking does it include snacks of course have you seen that corn in malls and in cinema halls the loose corn that's sold try eating it you won't digest it i mean sorry to get dirty here look at your poop the next day it'll just come out intact it's rubber it's it's like plastic it's ridiculous whenever i see a mother or a parent buying that for the children i just go and tell them i don't care about offending them i tell them just don't buy it is like ridiculous i mean you're killing yourself you know companies abroad who manufacture these genetically modified variety of crops now they are being questioned in their home countries and now they are dumping everything in our wonderful country it's a sad truth uh, i mean i'm not one of those conspiracy theorists but they just need to find markets where they going to sell their products and when they have deep pockets which is a lot of money and you try and give money to governments to you know 
help in some nice project and then as a side benefit you get these rights to push products into india which is very very unfortunate i mean i'm a lawyer i do a lot of intellectual property law so i know the reality of what these companies are doing in india trust me it's not funny at all um vishnu i just had one you know one concluding question if if you know if anyone else had any questions please put them in chat vishnu was so uh, patiently answering our questions vishnu what do you think are the worst products like will you give us a list of things that we should definitely get rid of okay so i want to i mean if you if you use the colgates and pepsodent pepsodent throw them as far away as you can um if you use the lysols and the harpix and the collins and the wins and the prills just throw them as far away as you can if you use the luxes and the loreals and the i mean the tresemes right these fancy salon kind of products just throw them away as far as you can they're all ridiculous i mean you should know when you get a hair spa done does your hair look good i mean hair spa costs like a few thousand rupees right so your hair should at least look good for 10 days if it doesn't i mean i mean the the the, the proof is in front of you as simple as that so uh, ira we we'll, let's look at the question the other way let's not look at the products to absolutely throw away let's look at what to actually use try and use pure simple easy to understand natural stuff for example um ira said this at her class two weeks back or last sunday that you know yogis need to oil you know you emphasizing on oiling the body oiling the body and if you all remember she said don't bother about fancy oils go to your kitchen shelf and look at cold pressed coconut or sesame or sunflower or whatever just use cold pressed oil no refinement only filtration to remove dirt and that's it your body will start responding you will see energy levels rise just start cooking your products in desi ghee ghar ka bana ghee or even source ghee from outside no problem a lot of people now selling at least in haryana we have a lot of these um, you know a2 ghee manufacturers i'm not really into the a2 stuff but you know a1 is also okay so long as the farmer doesn't put antibiotics in his and growth hormones for the cattle um you know one reason they say you know we in in the hindu tradition they say don't eat beef um you know the the reason is very simple cow whatever it eats of the ground it has this unique ability to absorb all the toxins in the flesh but it doesn't go into the milk so the milk comes out pure and the skin it absorbs all the toxins in its skin and it can live huh? it's an amazing animal it's one reasons why it's revered the other reason is you know people always say cow milk or buffalo milk cow milk cow is naturally clean animal it's very energetic by nature buffalo is very lazy so if you're convalescing from a disease take buffalo but if you're day to day life go for cow um it will just change your energy levels again there is so much i can talk about uh if vegan can't have ghee what is closest to it tough question monica i'll be very honest with you i'm not a vegan i'm a vegetarian i do have a lot of ghee um i guess you could look at almond butter peanut butter yeah um monica if you want to do this at home there are wonderful you know juicers that double as nut pressers and you can get cold pressed butter straight out of a juicer like there's a brand called nama you could see that's available in india do you even have something called hurom but one of the more up market variants of hurom may be able to process uh, nut butters for you at home so that's a good alternative um peanut butter is excellent almond butter made at home is excellent i i don't go for the skippies and the other brands uh luckily there's a friend of ours who makes it in gurgaon i mean she she's doing it for a long time now so she makes homemade butters and and sells them as a business um because my daughter likes peanut butter with bread and so you know we 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 keep that in the house as well um my daughter loves chocolate milk so i told you what i've done i mean i have now sourced organic raw cocoa from kerala from a brand called looms and weaves yeah very nice name for a food brand and i just mix desi khand or sugar you know desi sugar which is raw raw sugar uh and 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 she likes it i, I put some almond oil you know your kids typically have a lot of constipation put a few drops of almond oil cold pressed almond oil in the night with some milk it's you know, 5:30 safe and natural way to keep them happy and yet clean them you know so my i i do twice a week brushing of my daughter with the finger and the tooth powder in the night i and she does her own dabar lal you know two three times I me mean, twice a day um and you know uh, don't take it as a burden in your mind you know just like you brush your teeth every day you take a bath every day treat these as day to day habits eventually they'll you'll just acquire the force of habit that's it i mean you don't have to do oil pulling every day you don't have to you know not wear your perfume keep it occasional you know i always tell people avocado is not grown in india but if you want to enjoy your guacamole go to a mexican restaurant have your guacamole and get out that's it it's as easy as that 
so you know uh, try and have local food um i i i've stopped using you know personal care products in the chemical world completely and it's changed my own complexion you know there's a i i feel there's a natural oiliness inside i had i had dry skin but i then figured out that my skin also had a lot of oil in it which came out after i stopped using these products because these products clog pores a lot hmm? you typically hear that you know skin cancer is caused by the sun and that's like the most ridiculous untruth this world has ever seen right the sun cannot cause skin cancer the sun gives you life sun is the life force primordial life force on this planet when you feel hot in the sun time to go into the shade or wear a cap if your skin is a bit sensitive as simple as that what causes skin cancer is actually a product that every woman wants to apply on her face sunscreen simple as that because the sunscreen contains chemicals there is nothing natural about a sunscreen now when the screen is on your face it's supposed to shield the sun but the sun is far more potent than the sunscreen it heats up the skin and the pores open and the sunscreen goes in it goes into the blood stream and that's when the problem starts so you want sunscreen wear a cap wear a hat or try and figure out something natural i mean the idea is setting up a foundation here please explore share your ideas on the group that i made a sunscreen with this 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 Uh, i mean i could not do without a moisturizer in winters you know i had very dry skin now i just use aloe vera gel and i use a couple of drops of almond oil with that and it just works wonders i mean i i can't i mean same for the hair uh, i mean I'm, i don't really have a lot of hair to speak of but still i mean for whatever it's worth um so you know uh, there's a lot of food for thought today if anyone has any questions please feel free to ask them now or you know we can end this again continuing monologue of mine <laughs> thank you vishnu that was so wonderful i'll just add in you know one one or two points for the ladies here you know because what happens is that uh it's hard because you know you do have to think about sort of you know you do have to think about the hair is it you know and things like that so what ends up happening is when you first switch over to natural shampoos it is a little tough so i'm going to tell everyone this all right um there are a lot of but it's good to experiment with the brands so especially with shampoo especially because i have long hair it's always a little and especially because i oil my hair a lot so then to take the oil out of the hair <laughs> completely and then you want oil free hair and then you want hair that looks good and which is silky and shiny so that transition process it is a process it takes a little bit of time to transition but there are certain remedies for example if um uh, i find that if my you know if i go and i let sunshine actually dry my hair a little bit my hair actually is really and silky and shiny naturally if you are in a country which allows you to do that you know um sometimes washing the hair a little bit less uh is a good idea and instead using kind of now there's a lot of natural dry shampoos that you can use so instead of you know washing hair more and more using you know and these a lot of these nat- dry shampoos are using completely natural products so there are these kind of switches so hair and shampoo definitely when you switch over to something which natural it doesn't give you that kind of you know it's like we're so used to using uh, unnatural shampoos for so many years that that switch it takes a little bit of time but ultimately it helps because so many women suffer hair fall problems you know so it does take a few months so don't give up with the natural thing and actually what vishnu said is the correct way of um of using shampoo bars it's a much it's actually now you know this is i think what the world is going to come to in a few years like this is what the next you know using bar which is always what our ancestors did right they didn't have stuff in plastic bottles right. they were using rita and they were using these things so the switch over as a woman especially with hair care with skin care that stuff does take a little bit of time you know it doesn't happen as easily because you know with makeup with this with that so you kind of have to take baby steps you know one step by one step so even with shampoos what i personally do is i keep three shampoos at one time because it's quite interesting you know if you use the same same shampoo over and over again even like the the body will get used to it so just like anything else you have to shock it so use a second one you know and again the juicy chemistry is a brand that i really like and they have fairly natural products that you know that actually they they're using 
something like apple cider vinegar, but they're also using another essential oil. So it starts smelling good and it starts feeling a little bit good, but you have to get used to it and the body has to get used to it. But I must tell you one thing. I stopped using soap, you know, <laughs> soap I stopped using on my body. And there was absolutely, I must tell you, I think soap on our bodies is like almost a conspiracy theory. If you stop using soap on your body, you actually see that there's no difference. Like there's no, like, you don't. it's not as if you're dirty. If you, of course, if you have mud on your body, you know, if you have mud or if you get dirty, then you can use soap. But on a day-to-day -day life, if you're not getting dirty, then even clean, just plain water is more than enough. With a little bit of besan. So soap, it's, it's shocking. And I put a lot of oil on my body. And despite putting oil, I find that soap, I don't need so much. So if you actually stop using soap for a week, then you just see, you'll be like, wow, I've used this for so many years and uh, I don't even need it. So these are some of my findings. But soap, I feel, is something that I've, 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 I've stopped using. Of course, on some private parts, you do have to use soap. That's okay. Um, even for those, you know, you get, you have slightly more natural alternatives. But still, on the main body, you actually don't need so much soap. So these are my findings. But ladies with the hair, it does take experimentation. It takes a few different shampoos. And it takes a little bit of time, but then you have to be fine. Okay. So yeah, I'm, these I'm, are my... <laughs> I'm going to add just two tips, quick tips here. So typically we all look at post shampooing conditioner, right? Like a non frizzy kind of conditioner. So one of the brands that I recommended, it's called Pure Elements. Check their website out. It's a husband and wife Ayurvedic doctor couple. And they make, I mean, they manage to get a consistency of the oil that they sell. Um, it's not, it's not really greasy at all. Uh, you can use it every day. And it's more like a serum that you use after wash. The best thing you, you can do for your hair, especially people with long hair, women, is Sambrani or Lobhan. Yeah? In, in, in traditional South Indian homes, Lobhan, pure Lobhan or Sambrani is burnt in a, like a vessel and you hang your wet hair over it. You don't burn your hair. Be careful. But it's the best cleaner, anti-germicide, anti-fungal, anti-everything for your hair. So you dry your hair after a hair wash with that and then you will see results in a few weeks. You will see that you know, you don't need, as Ira says, you don't need so many products that you think you need. Um, soaps, if you, you know, it's, it's a good suggestion. Uh, there are a lot of brands like Wild Ideas and even the Isha Foundation sells powders. Yeah, they just mix Rita and Shikakai and, you know, and, and these powders, you can, you can buy a small wooden pestle and mortar. It looks very nice in the bathroom. Make your paste, use that as soap. It's like a powder, it's like a paste and it, it gives you a wonderful feeling. You, you get a little exfoliated. At the same time, the smells are completely tolerable and you'll feel very relaxed. So these are natural products which you'll inhale. Your mood gets better. You know, you'll just feel far more relaxed. So you try the powders as an alternative to soap bars. All right. Thank you so much, Vishnu. That was so fantastic. And we will put the presentation in the group. I will. Actually. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll just edit it a bit and send it. I'll, I'll send a PDF great, great. form. This is easier to open on phones then. And, you know, great, keep great. your questions coming. Keep, you know, just keep your comments coming. Uh, Gitanjali, space pollution free. Unfortunately, we don't have that kind of power. Uh, automobile and industrial manufacturers need to figure that out. Uh, but I don't think you need air, I don't think you need air purifiers. The real pollution comes from chemicals. The indoor pollution is chemical. It's got nothing to do with, I don't have air purifiers at home. Uh, my wife is partly asthmatic. Nothing happened beyond what normally happens to her. So... <laughs> Play a sport, do lots of yoga, meditate, allow your sympathetic nervous system to calm down every day. Accumulated calming down will rid you of a lot of disease. That's the power of meditation and pranayama and shavasana. And of course, other asanas that you do to regulate your body and keep it robust and fit. Arata is okay. Yeah. Thank you I, so much, Vishnu. All right. Yeah. Arata has some. Arata is good. And Kritika, you know, again, dry, dry shampoos can be extremely toxic because they have an aerosol, but yeah. there are a lot of dry shampoos now, which are just, you know, um, which are really, really very natural and quite nice. And so, so many of them, a lot of different companies, you know, it's like almost just like a, a powder. Um, so yeah, I just have to, again, as Vishnu said, I think the easiest thing is to check the label, you know, and the label will pretty much tell you how natural and unnatural it is. And so, and I think one more point, I know there's a lot of people here from different countries, and almost every country now has their own entrepreneurs and people doing so much wonderful local stuff, Correct. you know? Correct. So it is, 
a little bit more expensive, a little bit more, but it's, it's totally worth it. It's not that much more expensive. And you know, these products last a long time. You know, when you buy a, a new face wash, a new shampoo, they last for some time. So definitely worth spending that extra two, 300 rupees on it. On our yoga shop, we try to find good products, good, like really nice entrepreneurs who need a platform to um, sell their products. It's just, you know, we just find them and we put them up and there's, there's no sort of profits that we take in any way. We just like to sort of find stuff and put it on there. So I'd love your recommendations from uh, brands who you think need a little bit of a small platform, you know, yep. who sometimes don't have online retail and, you know, whatever it is. So we keep on putting or, you know, it's we just like them and they in fact just come and put, you know, put their stuff on our thing. So would definitely like to see that. Um, and yeah, so if there's, we try to put small, small helpful things like tongue cleaners and, you know, mm. some moisturizers that we like and some, you know, some stuff like that. So you guys can also check it out. Um, you know, we, and also recommend, recommend stuff that you may like too. All right, thank you everyone. Vishnu has been so kind and patient and Vishnu is, you know, do, I'm, I'm, I hope he doesn't mind. We'll share his email address. So you can reach out to him with any questions that you have, and then we'll share the presentation as well. I'll share a PDF very soon. I'll just delete the slide on the chemical products. I don't want that to be in a public forum. You all know what they are. <laughs> okay. uh, other than that, I'm on the group as well. Just feel free to ask questions anytime, you know, just or personally, you just send me a direct message if you want, if you want to keep that. Uh, oh, that's really kind of you. Yeah, we'll, we'll share your email, you know, just in case, Vishnu, just oh, sure, sure. so that you don't. I mean, no, no, I have no issues at all. I mean, the idea is <laughs> just so you know, we don't bombard you and stuff. We'll, we'll, no, no, we'll, no. we'll uh, appreciate my <laughs> now. I mean, besides my own practice of yoga and my own seek, my own seeking, my own sadhana, but this is this is like my main mission now. Uh, I try and equip people with the tools to, you know, get the knowledge themselves. Awesome. No, wonderful, and definitely, I think better home also is it's Vishnu. You recommend that brand? I've been seeing that. I haven't used their products, but. I think they have a number of products under yeah, yeah. their banner. Yeah, they, they, they basically give you a nice, um, you know, collection of the toilet cleaner, the detergent, the dishwashing liquid and the floor cleaner. So it's a nice, you can try the small pack, it's like half a liter of each. Now I, I, after testing the half a liter of the detergent, I bought the five liter pack. It's working wonderfully well. Um, so all the brands I've recommended are the ones I've tried personally. So feel free to go ahead and use them, explore their own sites, see what they have to offer spend this, make this effort to do good for your family and for your homes. It'll be worth it. Thank you so much, Vishnu. Thank you everyone for joining. This was such a wonderful session. Thank you everyone. Thank and you. Bye. Thank you. See you all tomorrow.